Welcome to Dick Turpin episode 4, The Poacher, or Coded for Gay. the next episode of Dick Turpin. This is The Poacher. As you can see, Swift Nick and Dick Turpin are doing what they do best, riding at the same coach again and again. Unfortunately, this caper has a bit of a problem. You're too late, you scoundrels. We've already been robbed. That's the third this week. Mm. Looks like we've got a poacher on our hands. They spy the poacher and chase him where he runs into a forest. Not wanting to get lost in it, they stand at the other end and bump into this man. Odds nails! Two more of the creatures! I've nothing left, you rogues! Not a farthing! T'other vultures picked me clean! What is it? I think it's a man. This particular style of dress and affected way of talking was known as macaroni and they were the precursors to the dandies. They took a lot of influence from the French court and then they used it up a bit with a bit of English spice. Of course, they were taking the mickey out of for their effeminacy and uh, this particular TV programme being made in the 70s when people were raised on Burt Reynolds' buff moustache. There's a lot of gay panic jokes in this episode. There I was, taking the air and composing a clever little ditty, when... Hey? A little ditty? I, pretty Dillis, of all the girls that love me so, my favourite still is Dillis. The other jades are not to me, but pretty Dillis still is. <laughs> no wonder they robbed him. Where's my nephew? Lord knows, Sir John. Uh, you don't like him, do you? He skips about the house like a dox's lapdog. Quite turns me stomach. I've been robbed, Uncle. Robbed? The devil you have. When was this? Barely an hour ago. Oh, it's nails, what a barbarous county. I can't ride five miles without some, some great hairy brute in a mask pursuing me with a pair of the most enormous... Not a me, not a me, not a me. ...pistols you ever saw. He took the actor playing Willoughby is called Rupert Fraser. And he's been in a great deal, actually, of telly and in the odd film. He specialises in playing lords and sirs and counts, the odd prime minister, a king now and again, as someone called Rupert probably should. You gutless butterfly! Now, now, Spiker, leave the little beggar alone. He's upset, ain't you, Willoughby? Perhaps he don't want to catch the villain. Perhaps he is better off not catching him. What was that? <laughs> a joke. A joke. Spiker? I ain't afraid of you, you great bully. So Spiker's back on the case after Dick Turpin and this other highwayman, just to prove his honour. Put him down, Spiker. In the pub, there's again someone suspicious lurking. He says his name's Vizard. Listens to everything. Listens, eh? He don't say much. Perhaps he's the rival highwayman they've been seeking. Fate. Do you think this will convince Fazard? It shouldn't. If you knew such a fob as I were carrying gold to Bath, hmm, I'd be on the road waiting to rob him. Hmm. Let's hope Vizard thinks the same. I said, what's it like her? Is Dick Turpin enjoys using his silly voices with Vizard, and he tells him where he's going and sets him up to be robbed later. <laughs> then he goes into the pub. Do you want a room, sir? No, it's me now. It's me. Another bottle of claret. Coming, sir, coming. Who's that? Some fop. 
from Rookham Hall. Oh, yeah, I believe I know him. A right molly. If you know your 18th century slang, then Dick Turpin has not coded Willoughby as gay, but actually called him that, as that is what a molly was. Good day, sir. Your seven, sir. Yours, sir. They engage in foppish banter. Meanwhile, Spiker has someone important to meet. Joshua Vizard. You're very late, Captain Spiker. My letter said 11. I've been chasing a highwayman. So have I, Captain. I've been chasing him for two years. Your master's nephew, Willoughby Cresset. When a woman puts denim on her man, he knows that the more she puts on, the more life takes off. Too hard. Swiftnick has found Willoughby's fancy dress highwayman costume in his bag, and so they call him out. Pretty Dillis. Why, yes, I... Of all the girls that love me so, my favourite one is Dillis. God's nails. And we were after a cove called Vizard. Vizard? Is he in the district? It turns out, compared to Spiker, Vizard is the real deal. And they're going to have to do something about it. However, Willoughby can't run away because... But I've gambling debts of £3,000. Oh, it's nails, but that's a mountain of money to steal. Then why don't you go back to London? There's plenty of rich takings there. Because of Vizard. Do you think I like the country? Do you think I relish its coarse smells and rude noises? I can't walk five yards without treading in something. I long for London. Well, then why don't you gallop back there and take Vizard with you? I'd go if you'd help me. Help you? How? Willoughby reveals that he has come to steal from his uncle John Glutton, something that these two are, of course, very keen on. Unfortunately, John Glutton keeps the key to his strong room with his pillow at all times. And so, how are they going to get it? Cue shenanigans. Zachary, where's Diggory? In the scuttery, says I'm You're new, ain't you? Yes, I do. Get him out! Get him out! Get him out! Get him out! Oh, you scolded me! You fucking moonface! You got to go! You cat and you slum and get me in your night dress! No! Where's Diggory? In the little room, you rogue! I'll have you quartered! I'll have you strung up! I'll have you whipped! Pardon me, Mr. Turpin, but this is my quarrel, ain't it, Captain? You fool. 
fool, Cressid. Out of the way, you painted maypole, or I'll run you through. See, the joke here is that the effeminate man is in fact the best swordsman in the series. Your guard's a little high and your wrists are shaved stiff. Otherwise, the nice bold style. A little military perhaps. Otherwise, not very imaginative. Anyone else care to try? No. Uncle! Willoughby, you never stop surprising me. Oh, snails, Mr. Turpin. Don't judge a man by the curls on his wig. You must open an egg to find the worth of its innards. Then you must be the finest egg in the chicken's coop. Oh, the nails you are. <laughs> how much you enjoy this episode will probably depend on how much you enjoy Willoughby the Camp Man mystery. But he is the main thrust of this. However, he is well supported by Cheeky Chirpy Chappy, Dick Turpin, and also John Glutton does some of his best faces, and Spike is kind of fun in this also. There's not as much action as usual, but there's a lot more comedy, if you like the kind of camp comedy that it's going for. So, a pretty good episode all round, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.